By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have another nice game for you where I play with my Zombie Nation deck. You've probably seen it before on the channel. And I'm playing it against Diamond Wallies and uh, it's a deck based on Diamond Valley and a bunch of walls and it's actually piloted by a player called Greg who's better known as old school MTG on Instagram so if you don't follow him yet on Instagram it's really worth your while if you're interested in old school magic cards he's got a really cool account and has very interesting posts on his Insta uh, for now uh, I'm going to do a little bit of a deck tech like I always do on both of these decks especially uh, Greg's deck is very intri uh, interesting if you want to go straight to the games themselves, obviously you can do so. Like always, there is a timestamp in the description below and then it will take you straight to game number one. And here I'm going to continue with a little deck deck. The first deck that I would like to look at is the deck by Old School MTG. And here you can see the cards and look at the beauty. I mean, what a deck it is. Um, let's try to kind of see what this deck is all about and of course what you notice here is a full play set of diamond valleys and diamond valley is a card from the arabian nights a lance card and if you tap it you can sacrifice a creature and then you gain life equal to the toughness of the creature so not the power but the toughness now obviously this is great with walls you see some wall of earths wall of light wall of swords walls usually have a pretty good toughness so that means that by sacking a wall and he can do that at instant speed with diamond valley he just gains a ton of life now what else do we see in this deck we see a lot of what i call pingers we see mana barbs we see copper tablets and we also see ank of mishra so those are kind of cards that hurt you but also hurt your opponent now i can already see a little combo here because um, you're taking a lot of damage your opponent is taking a lot of damage but you have your diamond valley sack outlet to kind of win that race so you can make extra life for yourself by just sacking a wall of earth alone you get six life and your opponent probably doesn't have a life gain mechanism life gain is i think a little bit underestimated at the moment in magic the gathering um, now we also see some other synergies here uh, for example uh, because he's playing with mana barbs, he's obviously playing with a lot of artifact mana, although it's not that many, but it's some. He plays with two flower stone, a soul ring, the moxen, and the black lotus. So that obviously that's not going to hurt him when he draws mana out of those uh, mana rocks. So that's again an advantage because he's playing with the, with the mana barbs. Also, we see here the martyrs of Corliss. This 1-6 creature from the Antiquities is kind of an artifact bodyguard. It soaks up all the damage that you get from artifacts. Now, obviously, that works great with the 4 Copper Tablets and the 3 Ank of Mishras. So, I think the, the main objective of this deck is to just get all those pain artifacts and enchantments on the board in combination with Diamond Valley and kind of win that life gain uh, race. And at the same, same time, you play out your walls and those walls will protect you until they no longer have to and then you can sack them to your diamond valley another interesting choice here is the three disharmonies uh, it's a very entertaining card a very cool card what it does is when your opponent attacks you can play disharmony and you can pick one of the creatures and say okay this creature is now mine and you can use it as a blocker however you want to now obviously uh, disharmony works great with diamond valley as well so your opponent attacks you play disharmony you steal the creature of your opponent and it's only until end of turn but you have your diamond valley to sack it to so that kind of gives uh, makes this harmony a better card having those diamond valleys in there and actually i wish i had a full play set of diamond valleys because those cards are just so cool um looking at the sideboard nothing uh, really special or too exciting there just uh, a business sideboard i would say so this is the deck diamond wallies uh, created by old school mtg now let's have a look at my deck I am playing with Zombie Nation. You've seen this deck before. It's, uh, this deck is not made by me. It's made by uh, Yup Vak. But I borrowed this deck for Halloween. I thought, hey, maybe I can uh, you know, play some more games with it because it was just so entertaining. The idea of this deck is pretty simple. You have a lot of zombies. And because of the 
Uh, zombie master, you can give your zombie swamp walk. I have evil presence, so I give my opponent a swamp and then they're unblockable. As you can see, there are four bad moons here and there's also a Lord of the Pit because Lord of the Pit is very, very cool. So um, it's a simple deck, but I think it's a very flavorful deck and it's actually not that bad. It's really a cool deck to play. So I'm curious if kind of my unblockable aggression uh, can hold up against uh, this very interesting Diamond Wallies deck that I'm about to play. Game number one is about to start and let's first talk about the screen here because it's kind of unusual because both Greg and myself are playing in the opposite directions of each other. So usually what I do is the original screen is actually upside down and then I flip the screen so you can both look at it. Unfortunately, and I realize this is quite annoying, um, yeah, Crack is playing in another direction. I'm playing in another direction, so flipping the screen in this case has little use for you. So we're just gonna have to make do with this screen here. Uh, as you can see, I played an evil presence here over Craig's, I believe it was a Mishra's factory, so that means he's got a swamp now. I'm playing my second swamp passing turn here. He's cracking the Lotus. Uh, is there going to be a Sarah Angel here on the board? A 4-4 Vigilance Flyer. I don't play with Terror in my main deck. And look at that, an Island of Wak Wak. It's a card from the Arabian Nights and you can tap it and then target flying creature gets uh, power is reduced to zero. So it's kind of like a maze of if for flying creatures, but different. And let's see what he's gonna do next. He's playing a Mana Barb, so that's the red enchantment. And that means that I get a damage every time I tap a land for mana. And this also counts uh, for Crack actually, who is now supposed to go, yeah, he's going to 19 there. You can see the dice there in the right top corner. And now it's my turn playing a third Swamp. Tapping it, so that means all of a sudden I have to pay three lives to play out a Scafe Zombies, a 2-2 vanilla creature. So that looks like a very good deal for, for Crack. And let's see what's gonna happen next. Tapping two land as well, taking two damage also, going to 17, playing a Felwer Stone. And I need to find a Zombie Master here to give Scape Zombie Swamp Walk and deal some damage here. Taking three more damage, going to 14, playing that Zombie Master that I talked about, playing another Swamp. Now it's unblockable and attacking. And this is basically what the deck wants to do is attack with unblockable zombies. I know, that that's it. That's the idea of Zombie Nation. That's basically it. What you see on the board now is the idea of the entire deck. Play an Evil Presence, play a Zombie, play a Zombie Master, and attack. That's all there is to it. And um, So far, it's going okay. Uh, we can see that Greg is on 15, playing another Zombie Master. I think I need to be a little bit careful now with you know not playing too much here, because I'm on 11. Attacking him now for four because the zombie masters give each other swamp walk. They also have regenerate for one black, by the way. So we see that Greg is now going to 11, playing a strip mine. Am I going to use it? I am. I'm actually stripping his planes there. I want him to use his um, city of brasses for mana, you know, that he can slowly kill himself as well. Because now with the mana barbs, using city of brass will now deal two damage to him instead of one. Tapping two swamps here, playing an artifact or copper tablet. It does take a damage for using that swamp. And I'm feeling pretty confident actually. I don't really mind a copper tablet at this point. And I think what Craig really needs now is a wall and a diamond valley to gain some life. Attacking here, swinging in for six. That means he's going to four life and also taking that life from his own copper tablet going to three. So it's looking good for me here for that first game. And then we'll go to our sideboards. But I'm not there yet. And attacking and that's, that's it, that's it. Okay, <laughs> I was just waiting. Maybe, you know, Crack would do something, uh, a little miracle from his side, but it's not happening. So I've won this first game and we're going to our sideboards and we'll get back to you in game number two. Game number two, and after that win, it means Greg gets to start again. And look at that, a Library of Alexandria, so hopefully I can find an evil presence. Yes! That's what you do, that's what we do with the Loas. We make them into evil swamps, swampy terrain. 
I think Evil Presence is a really, really good card for just one black. But I'm sure that Greg has boarded in his disenchants, so if he can find one. I believe he had three in his sideboard. Look at that. There's the disenchant and turn, and that means that he can activate his Loa again. He was on the play, so I'm sure he doesn't have enough cards in hand at the moment. So that's what he's waiting for now, and I'm, <laughs> I'm playing another evil presence. Oh, man. That's just bad luck here for uh, Craig. Playing a soul ring now. So if bad luck, if it means bad luck for my opponent, it means luck for me, I guess. So I'm very lucky here. And tapping four, I wonder what's going to come. Play a scavenging ghoul. It's a 2-2 creature with a lot of text that it's somehow in some weird kind of way when a creature dies, it gets a regeneration counter. Um, but, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. For now, it's not, not happening. Um, playing a Headless Horseman. And there's again a Disenchant by my opponent here, Greg. And the Headless Horseman is actually uh, considered a zombie in the modern days here of Magic. Which is quite nice, because it means you can use it in your zombie deck. So, it's a beautiful art by Quinton Hoover. And in the meanwhile, we've seen Crack using a Disenchant, using his Loa again. And now I'm attacking for four. And he's trying to pump his factory, but he cannot use the factory to pump itself because it has Summoning Sickness. Uh, still decides to trade though because he is getting pretty low on his life total and probably thinks I'm just going to use the Library of Alexandria to draw some new cards and compensate for the loss. And that's exactly what he's doing. So he's now drawing two cards a turn. I've already used up two evil presences. And now my Zombie Master is not working as well. And there's a Wall of Earth. A 0-6 wall. And that's going to be able to stop at least one of the two zombies. And what can I do? Playing Swamp number four here. And <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. Okay, this is just another evil presence. This is just ah, this is just silly. This is just being silly. This is just me finding three evil presents in a row. I mean, this is just a little bit ridiculous. And that means that Greg has to take four more damage. He can no longer use his Library of Alexandria. And it also means that now my zombie army, or at least my headless horseman, is now unblockable. Not yet my zombie master, because therefore I need another zombie master in the game. And there's the mana barbs here by my opponent. And there's a plains passing turn. Attacking again. Blocking one, obviously, and just taking the two damage from the Hatless Horseman because it has Swamp Walk because of the Zombie Master. And now Craig is playing out the Mishra's Factory here. And another Wall of Earth. And it does mean he gets some damage from his own Mana Barbs. Going to 11 now. And let's see what else he can do. Is there going, coming to be, yes, another Zombie Master. That means that my other Zombie Master gains Swamp Walk, and that's very bad news here for my opponent. And I really feel that Evil Presence has won me this game. Well, he is still on seven. Maybe he can make a comeback, do a disenchant, and then my whole game plan is gone. And there's a tap for two. Is this going to be a disenchant? No, it's not. And he's taking... If he does this, he's taking two damage. So he's changing his mind. Because he's already on seven. And I have six damage on the board. Six unblockable zombie damage there. Playing another swamp here. Attacking full capacity. And if he taps for land, it, he's dead because of the mana barbs. So he just has to take the damage. He's on one life. 
And he needs a Diamond Valley, but he's not finding it. If he could have pulled the Diamond Valley here, and that means game number two is also going to the Zombie Nation deck. And that means a, a victory here of this matchup. But you know what we did? We decided to play some more games because his deck is great. And this second game was just me finding three evil presences in a row. So we're going to play game number three. Game number three is about to begin. And I kind of think that the first two games, you know, my opponent hasn't had a chance to really show his deck in full glory because it's called Diamond Wallies. So what he needs are walls and a Diamond Valley. We haven't seen a single Diamond Valley in those games. So let's hope that Craig can find one here in game number three. This at least looks like a pretty good start here. A Mishra's Factory into a Sol Ring into a Felwar Stone passing turn. And I'm just playing a single Swamp here. And now attacking with his Factory, dealing two damage and playing a Copper Tablet. So this is looking pretty good actually for my opponent here. And I'm able to play the Walking Dead. Another creature that says, I believe, summon Walking Dead or summon Skeleton, but it's also a zombie now. The creature type has been updated on these cards. And there's another Copper Tablet. So it's really looking good here. And a Chaos Orb. So maybe we're going to see a flip. We haven't seen a flip yet in these matches. And I'm on 17, actually on 15 now because of the double Copper Tablet trigger. And there it is again, the Evil Presence. And that takes care of that Mishra's Factory. Attacking attacking here for one, and Craig goes to 18, playing a Mummy. Also one that has now an updated creature type being a Zombie. It's a 2-1 creature, and when it dies, it's exiled. So it goes to the grave. It doesn't go to the graveyard. It's immediately removed from the game. And Crack taking the 2 damage from his own Copper Tablets, passing turn again. And I'm taking the 2 damage as well. So that means I'm on 13, Greg is on 16, but he doesn't have any blockers at the moment, so I'm, I potentially can deal 3 damage now. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. There's no flip here from my opponent, so he's going to 13 as well. And there's a Cabal Ghoul. And this creature is pretty cool that when another creature dies on the battlefield, so it can be on your side or on your opponent's side, then at the end of turn, you can put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on the Ghoul. And Cabal Ghoul and all the Ghouls, also Scavenger Ghoul, they're now also Zombies. And there is a Wall of Earth. So that can be pretty useful, but there is a flip. So he's going to flip. Let's see if he can actually hit it. It's a nice angle here from his camera. So obviously I've put it in slow-mo, and there we see the flip. Bam, and it is a hit. Very nice flip here. Well done. And that means the... Ghoul is gone. It's a goner. And I have to take two damage now. Hopefully I don't forget. I think I do. So I need to go to 11 here. Exactly. And Greg is reminding me. Thank you for that. And I'm placing a counter now on my deck just to remind myself that before I draw that I take the two damage. Teching, you're able to deal one damage and now it's actually Gregory who's, uh, who's forgetting as well. So it's difficult with these with these triggers. And it's one of the things that I really like about old school magic is that the upkeep is still such a vital phase. Like sometimes you play games and you have a whole sub game in your upkeep. Just you're not even at your draw step and it feels like you've had your entire turn. So now I'm taking two damage here going to nine. And I also played a zombie in the meanwhile. Tapping three here, probably. Oh, it's not a zombie master. I wanted to say if it's a zombie master with that evil presence there, with that swamp on the side of Gregory. Uh, crack, sorry, I have like a free passage. But it's not happening. And look at that. Martyrs of Corliss now doing the work. Soaking up the damage from the Copper Tablets there for Craig, and that means that he stays on 7. And there, finally, we have a Diamond Valley. Thank you, finally. So now we get to see it in action. And it's not looking very good for me here, to be honest. My life total here dropping to 7. Playing a Terror, so that comes from my sideboard here on the Martyr. That's very good news for me. That's great, because that means that uh, Greg is at least going to take 2 damage from his own Tablet, of course, I still have the problem with the Diamond Valley. 
And what I need here is a zombie master. Activating my little book means I get to draw a card and I have to discard a card. Passing turn here. And Greg is taking two damage. Going to five life, playing another Felwer Stone. And this is a very exciting game here. Another Diamond Valley. And the way it looks now, it looks like I'm just slowly going to die here. I need a way to deal with the Diamond Valleys or the life gain or something. Obviously, playing with black means I have little uh, weapons against artifacts. And there's a Blood Moon. That means that all my... I'm sorry, a Bat Moon, of course, not a Blood Moon, but a Bat Moon. Making all my creatures stronger here, giving them plus one, plus one. Simply attacking with everything. And remember, the beautiful Wall of Light has protection from black. And I want to put the pressure on, so I want him to... To at least, you know, force him to sack his creatures early. And this is interesting. An evil presence on his Diamond Valley. Is he going to use it? He's not. Of course, he has two Diamond Valleys, so he still has one active one. And he's now in one life because of the Copper Tablet. And I really wonder... What he has drawn. Tapping for four mana here. Ooh, a mana barbs. I like his style. Because that is pretty risky. Because remember, he has a Diamond Valley, but it's only good for one activation. He doesn't have two anymore, and he has to tap it to activate. So I'm going to three life. So simply attacking, I have to put the pressure on. And he's blocking both and sacking one after he declared blockers. So that means he doesn't take damage for that creature, but he does take two damage for the other walking dead. So he goes to five. Now taking two damage from the copper tablets, going to three life. And am I actually going to make this? Going to one here. Obviously attacking, I have to. And he's going to do the same trick, block and then sack. And that means he gets five life and then he takes four damage because of the two walking dead. And remember, I have that bat moon and then he's going to die. He's going to die on his own copper tablet. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. Wow, wow, wow. And it, it, it looks like... Uh, it looks like a very interesting and a very good deck, but it's just one step behind... Uh, on my zombie nation deck and here is the picture of the deck again i think when you look at this game you think okay he lost uh three games so you know the deck it's no good you know i i think you need to look at it again i think it has definite potential it's very interesting the synergy between walls and diamond valley that's a great one and also this idea um that you gain life with your diamond valley and that you can use all these little ping tactics because you're going to win the life race. I really like that idea. And these matches really showed me how strong a card like Mana Barbs is. I think Mana Barbs perhaps is a little bit underplayed. I, I used it in my sideboard to, uh, for one of my red decks against a Circle Protection Red. And it kind of works in there. But seeing it in action now, and if you can make a deck where Mana Barbs is really just much more of a pain in the ass for your opponent than for you, I, I can really kind of see that card becoming maybe more more present in in the future of old school magic um, i really really enjoyed this deck made by um old school mtg also known as crack or i should say crack also known as old school mtg if you're not following him on instagram yet and you have an instagram account and you like old school magic i would definitely look him up uh he's a great guy he's a great magic player and he's got a lot of He's got, just got a fantastic collection. Um, so his deck, Diamond Wallies. Let me know what you think about this deck in the comments below. Um, for now, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you want to support the channel, please become a member. If you're not a member yet, uh, subscribe to the channel. Leave a like, leave a comment, and let me know what you think of the content I make. For now, thank you for watching, and see you next time. Ik het als vinkertjes zomba kan zien.